Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. And this is Knights of Malta from the Encyclopedia Freemasonry by Albert G. Mackey. Knights of Malta. This order, which at various times in the progress of its history received the names of Knights Hospitallers, Knights of St. John of Jerusalem, Knights of Rhodes, and lastly, Knights of Malta was one of the most important of the religious and military orders of knighthood which sprang into existence during the Crusades, which were instituted for the recovery of the Holy Land. It owes its origin to the Hospitallers of Jerusalem, that holy religious and charitable order which was established at Jerusalem in 1048 by pious merchants of Amalfi for the succor of poor and distressed Latin pilgrims. See Hospitallers of Jerusalem. This society, established when Jerusalem was in possession of the Mohammedans, passed through many vicissitudes, but lived to see the holy city conquered by the Christian knights. It then received many accessions from the Crusaders who, laying aside their arms, devoted themselves to the pious avocation of attending the sick. It was then that Gerard, the rector of the hospital, induced the brethren to take upon themselves the vows of poverty, obedience, and chastity, which they did at the hands of the Patriarch of Jerusalem, who clothed them in the habit selected for the order, which was a plain black robe bearing a white cross of eight points on the left breast. This was in the year 1099, and some writers here date the beginning of the order of Knights of Malta. But this is an error. It was not until after the death of Gerard that the order assumed that military character which it ever afterward maintained, or in other words, that the peaceful hospitalers of Jerusalem became the warlike knights of St. John. In 1118, Gerard, the rector of the hospital, died and was succeeded by Raymond Dupuy, whom Maruli, the old chronicler of the order in his Vite de Grand Maestri, Napoli, 1636, called Secondo Rettore e Primo Maestro. The peaceful habits and monastic seclusion of the brethren of the hospital, which had been fostered by Gerard, no longer suited the warlike emus of his successor. He therefore proposed a change in the character of the society by which it should become a military order devoted to active labors in the field and the protection of Palestine from the encroachments of the infidels. This proposition was warmly approved by Baldwin II, King of Jerusalem, who, harassed by a continual warfare, gladly accepted this addition to his forces. The order having thus been organized on a military basis, the members took a new oath at the hands of the Patriarch of Jerusalem, by which they bound themselves to defend the cause of Christianity against the infidels in the Holy Land to the last drop of their blood, but on no account to bear arms for any other purpose. This act, done in 1118, is considered as the beginning of the establishment of the Order of Knights Hospitallers of St. John, of which Raymond Dupuy is by all historians deemed the first Grand Master. By the rule established by Dupuy for the government of the order, it was divided into three classes, namely, one, knights who were called Knights of Justice, two, chaplains, and three, serving brothers, all of whom took the three vows of chastity, obedience, and poverty. There was also attached to the institution a body of men called Donats, who, without assuming the vows of the order, were employed in the different offices of the hospital, and who wore what was called the Demi-Cross as a badge of their connection. The history of the Knights from this time until the middle of the 16th century is but a chronicle of continued warfare with the enemies of the Christian faith. When Jerusalem was captured by Saladin in 1187, the Hospitallers retired to Margat, a town and fortress of Palestine which still acknowledged the Christian sway. In 1191, they made Acre, which in that year had been recaptured by the Christians, their principal place of residence. For just 100 years, the Knights were engaged, with varying success, in sanguinary contests with the Saracens and other infidel hordes, until Acre, the last stronghold of the Christians in the Holy Land, having fallen beneath the blows of the victorious Muslims, Syria was abandoned by the Latin race, and the Hospitallers found refuge in the island of Cyprus, where they established their convent. The order had been much attenuated by its frequent losses in the field, and its treasury had been impoverished. 
but commands were at once issued by John de Villiers, the Grand Master, to the different Grand Priories in Europe, and large reinforcements in men and money were soon received, so that the fraternity were enabled again to open their hospital and to recommence the practice of their religious duties. No longer able to continue their military exploits on land, the knights betook themselves to their galleys, and while they protected the pilgrims who still flocked in vast numbers to Palestine, gave security to the Christian commerce of the Mediterranean. On sea, as on land, the hospitalers still showed that they were the inexorable and terrible foes of the infidels, whose captured vessels soon filled the harbor of Cyprus. But in time, a residence in Cyprus became unpleasant. The king, by heavy taxes and other rigorous exactions, had so disgusted them that they determined to seek some other residence. The neighboring island of Rhodes had long, under its independent princes, been the refuge of Turkish corsairs, a name equivalent to the more modern one of pirates. Fulk de Villeray, the Grand Master of the Hospital, having obtained the approval of Pope Clement and the assistance of several of the European states, made a descent upon the island, and after months of hard fighting, on the 15th of August, 1310, planted the standard of the order on the walls of the city of Rhodes, and the island thenceforth became the home of the Hospitallers, whence they were often called the Knights of Rhodes. The fraternity continued to reside at Rhodes for 200 years, acting as the outpost and defense of Christendom from the encroachments of the Ottoman power. Of this long period, but few years were passed in peace, and the military reputation of the order was still more firmly established by the prowess of the Knights. These two centuries were marked by other events which had an important bearing on the fortunes of the institution. The rival brotherhood of the Templars was abolished by the machinations of a Pope and a King of France, and what of its revenues and possessions was saved from the spoliation of its enemies was transferred to the Hospitallers. There had always existed a bitter rivalry between the two orders, marked by unhappy contentions which on some occasions, while both were in Palestine, amounted to actual strife. Toward the Knights of St. John, the Templars had never felt nor expressed a very kindly feeling. And now this acceptance of an unjust appropriation of their goods in the hour of their disaster keenly added to the sentiment of ill will and the unhappy children of de Molay, as they passed away from the theater of knighthood, left behind them the bitterest imprecations on the disciples of the hospital. The order, during its residence at Rhodes, also underwent several changes in its organization, by which the simpler system observed during its infancy in the Holy Land was rendered more perfect and more complicated. The greatest of all these changes was in the character of the European commanderies. During the period that the order was occupied in the defense of the holy places and losing large numbers of its warriors in its almost continual battles, these commanderies served as nurseries for the preparation and education of young knights who might be sent to Palestine to reinforce the exhausted ranks of their brethren. But now, secured in their island home, Jerusalem permanently in possession of the infidel and the enthusiasm once inspired by Peter the Hermit forever dead, there was no longer need for new crusaders. But the knights, engaged in strengthening and decorating their insular possession by erecting fortifications for defense and palaces and convents for residence, now required large additions to their revenue to defray the expenses thus incurred. Hence the commanderies were the sources whence this revenue was to be derived, and the commanders, once the principals, as it were, of military schools, became lords of the manor in their respective provinces. There, by a judicious and economical administration of the property which had been entrusted to them, by the cultivation of gardens and orchards, by the rent received from arable and meadowlands, of mills and fisheries appertaining to their estates, and even by the voluntary contributions of their neighbors and by the raising of stock, they were enabled to add greatly to their income. Of this, one-fifth was claimed under the name of Responsions as a tribute to be sent annually to Rhodes for the recuperation of the always diminishing revenue of the order. Another important change in the organization of the order was made at a general chapter held about 1320 at Montpellier under the Grand Master Xi of Villanova. The order was there divided into languages, a division unknown during its existence in Palestine. 
These languages were at first seven in number, but afterward increased to eight by the subdivision of that of Aragon. The principal dignities of the order were at the same time divided among these languages, so that a particular dignity should be always enjoyed by the same language. These languages and the dignities respectively attached to them were as follows. 1. Provence, Grand Commander. 2. Auvergne, Grand Marshal. 3. France, Grand Hospitaller. 4. Italy, Grand Admiral. 5. Aragon, Grand Conservator. 6. Germany, Grand Bailiff. 7. Castile, Grand Chancellor. 8. England, Grand Turiopolier. But perhaps the greatest of all changes was that which took place in the personal character of the knights. The order, says Taffer, had been above 200 years old before it managed a boat, but was altogether equestrian during its two first, and perhaps most glorious, centuries. But on settling at Rhodes, the knights began to attack their old enemies by sea with the same prowess with which they had formerly met them on land. And the victorious contests of the galleys of St. John with the Turkish Corsairs, who were infesting the Mediterranean, proved them well entitled to the epithet of naval warriors. In the year 1480, Rhodes was unsuccessfully besieged by the Ottoman army of Mohammed II under the command of Paleologus Pasha. After many contests, the Turks were repulsed with great slaughter. But the attack of the Sultan Soliman, 44 years afterward, was attended with a different result, and Rhodes was surrendered to the Turkish forces on the 20th of December, 1522. The terms of the capitulation were liberal to the knights, who were permitted to retire with all their personal property. And thus, in the grand mastership of Lyle Adam, Rhodes ceased forever to be the home of the order. And six days afterward, on New Year's Day, 1523, the fleet, containing the knights and 4,000 of the inhabitants, sailed for the island of Candia. From Candia, where the Grand Master remained but a short time, he proceeded with his knights to Italy. Seven long years were passed in negotiations with the monarchs of Europe and in the search for a home. At length, the Emperor Charles V of Germany vested in the order the complete and perpetual sovereignty of the islands of Malta and Gozo and the city of Tripoli, and in 1530, the knights took formal possession of Malta, where, to borrow the language of Porter, for upwards of two centuries and a half, waved the banner of St. John, an honor to Christianity and a terror to the infidel of the East. From this time, the order received the designation of Knights of Malta a title often bestowed upon it, even in official documents in the place of the original one of Knights Hospitallers of St. John of Jerusalem. For 268 years, the order retained possession of the island of Malta. But in 1798, it was surrendered without a struggle by Louis de Ompeche, the imbecile and pusillanimous Grand Master, to the French army and fleet under Bonaparte. And this event may be considered as the commencement of the suppression of the order as an active power. Ompish, accompanied by a few knights, embarked in a few days for Trieste and subsequently retired to Montpellier, where he resided in the strictest seclusion and poverty until May 12, 1805, when he died, leaving behind him not enough to remunerate the physicians who had attended him. The great body of the knights proceeded to Russia, where the Emperor Paul had a few years before been proclaimed the protector of the order. On the 27th of October, 1798, a chapter of such of the knights as were in St. Petersburg was held, and the Emperor Paul first was elected Grand Master. This election was made valid, so far as its irregularities would permit, by the abdication of Hompesh in July, 1799. At the death of Paul in 1801, his successor on the throne, Alexander, appointed Count Soltikoff as Lieutenant of the Mastery and directed him to convene a council at St. Petersburg to deliberate on future action. This assembly adopted a new statute for the election of the Grand Master, which provided that each Grand Priory should, in a provincial chapter, nominate a candidate, and that out of the persons so nominated, the Pope should make a selection. Accordingly, in 1802, the Pope appointed John de Tomasi, who was the last knight that bore the title of Grand Master. On the death of Tomasi, the Pope declined to assume any longer the responsibility of nominating a Grand Master, and appointed the bailiff Guevar Luardo simply as Lieutenant of the Mastery, a title afterward held by his successors, 
Centel, Busca, De Candida, and Colavedo. In 1826 and 1827, the first steps were taken for the revival of the English language, and Sir Joshua Meredith Bart, who had been made a knight in 1798 by Hompesch, being appointed Lieutenant Prior of England, admitted many English gentlemen into the order. But the real history of the Order of St. John of Jerusalem ends with the disgraceful capitulation at Malta in 1798. All that has since remained of it, all that now remains, however imposing may be the titles assumed, is but the diluted shadow of its former existence. The organization of the Order in its days of prosperity was very complicated, partaking both of a monarchist and a republican character. Overall presided a Grand Master who, although invested with extensive powers, was still controlled by the legislative action of the General Chapter. The Order was divided into eight languages, over each of which presided one of the Grand Dignitaries with the title of Conventual Bailiff. These dignitaries were the Grand Commander, the Grand Marshal, the Grand Hospitaller, the Grand Conservator, the Grand Turcopolier, the Grand Bailiff, and the Grand Chancellor. Each of these dignitaries resided in the palace or inn at Malta, which was appropriated to his language. In every province there were one or more Grand Priories presided over by Grand Priors, and beneath these were the Commanderies, over each of which was a Commander. There were scattered through the different countries of Europe 22 Grand Priories and 596 Commanderies. Those who desired admission into the Order as members of the First Class or Knights of Justice were required to produce proofs of noble descent. The ceremonies of initiation were public and exceedingly simple, consisting of little more than the taking of the necessary vow. In this, the Hospitallers differed from the Templars, whose formula of admission was veiled in secrecy. Indeed, Porter attributes the escape of the former order from the accusations that were heaped upon the latter and which led to its dissolution to the fact that the Knights abjured all secrecy in their forms and ceremonies. The order was dissolved in England by Henry VIII and, although temporarily restored by Mary, was finally abolished in England. A decree of the Constituent Assembly abolished it in France in 1792 by a decree of Charles IV of Spain in 1802 the two languages of Aragon and Castile became the Royal Spanish Order of St. John, of which he declared himself the Grand Master. Now only the languages of Germany and Italy remain. The Order is therefore at this day in a state of abeyance, if not of disintegration, although it still maintains its vitality, and the functions of Grand Master are exercised by a Lieutenant of the Magistery who resides at Rome. Attempts have also been made, from time to time, to revive the order in different places, sometimes with and sometimes without the legal sanction of the recognized head of the order. For instance, there are now in England two bodies, one Catholic under Sir George Bowyer and the other Protestant, at the head of which is the Duke of Manchester, but each repudiates the other. But the relic of the old and valiant order of Knights Hospitallers claims no connection with the branch of Masonry which bears the title of Knights of Malta, and hence the investigation of its present condition is no part of the province of this work. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe and comment and if you can please consider donating to Wars of the Roses links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.